Want a free iPod? Let's go to freeipods.com and get one. Promise. It seems like a scam and looks like a scam. One of the hottest accessories being given away for nothing. Where's the catch, you ask? Well, there isn't one if you're a savvy customer. And four and a half thousand free iPods have been shipped out so far. And it's not just iPods. You can also get free flat screen TVs and computers. On American college campuses, students are busy building their own websites to link to freeipods.com. John Sauer, a student in Boston, was inspired after his arrived in the mail. To get it, he had to sign up to a free trial posted by an advertiser and then get five friends to do the same. I'm ecstatic. I got an iPod just by signing up for stamps.com, canceling it, and then getting five other people to do an offer like stamps.com. He and his roommate Matt built their own site to show others how to do the same. Every time someone clicks from their site to freeipods.com, it counts as one of the five referrals. When they come to our site, it's counting as one of our referrals. And so you need five referrals for freeipods.com, and you need eight for freeflatscreens.com to get your free iPod or free flat screen. The purpose of freeipods.com is to get eyeballs looking at adverts Companies are willing to bribe customers just to try out their products listed here. It's a sign of how desperate marketers have become to get new customers that you don't actually need to buy anything on this site. All you need to do to get your free iPod is simply to sign up to a free trial. And there's some pretty reputable companies here. Here is a one-month free trial to Blockbuster, BMG Music. Down here, there's a one-month free trial to Netscape, New York Times. In the past, these companies would have made money simply because people would have forgotten to cancel their subscriptions. But on the internet, you're dealing with a whole new breed of person, someone who is used to getting free stuff very easily and who's not about to get suckered into buying something they don't want. Do any of your friends ever keep the subscriptions they sign up for? All the friends I know, they didn't really can't, they didn't keep their service. Um, there was the New York Times and... My friend signed up for them for about two weeks, but then he didn't really want it. He just wanted his iPod. I did stamps.com back in early early June, and I stayed with them for, well, I, I, it was a month free trial, and I stayed with them maybe three weeks, and then I canceled, and it was easy. So can the economics of this possibly work? The customer gets a free iPod worth $300. In return, the website has six people signed up to free trials. That's $50 each. The website then charges each advertiser a bounty of $30 to $70 for delivering each customer. So the website covers its costs, but is it worth paying that much just to get someone to try out your product? It only works if some of the customers stay with the program. The two entrepreneurs who invented the scheme claim the advertisers are very happy with the results. Well, we sign up, you know, thousands of users a day. I think that the economics work. They don't for these advertisers. They don't have to, ma you know, maintain all of these users that are signing up. They just have to maintain a certain percentage to make it to make it work. Yeah. As long as they maintain that percentage, then they're going to be they're going to want us to continue delivering them potential new customers. Deodorant zest made the Stanglins give up their soap. The tried and tested methods of advertisers are no longer working. People are watching fewer and fewer ads, and when they do see one, they no longer believe it. Only 30% of Americans now trust the claims in an advertisement. It's getting harder and harder, in other words, for a company to reach a customer, which is why they're prepared to pay them. Consumers are rejecting the old advertising models, and what we're seeing is in order to get their attention, in order to have them sit down long enough for you to make your pitch, you have to bribe them. And not just bribe them like uh, Columbia House used to do with 14 CDs for a penny. You have to bribe them with an iPod or a flat panel TV. Consumers are really rejecting advertising. We've also got a generation now that's been trained by the Internet that things are free, right? Downloading music is free. Why should I pay for that? So it's a pretty natural step, and why shouldn't I get my iPod for free, too, as long as I can get the music for free? So it looks like Matt and co are scamming the system, right? Well, maybe not, because actually these student sites are pushing many more referrals than the five needed for each iPod, and every additional referral is an extra customer for the advertisers. One of our friends actually had 52 referrals completed. So that helps iPods.com. Yeah. 
whether you get five referrals or whether you get 52 referrals, you're getting one iPod. So the fact that more are going through, it only helps free iPods. So instead of shelling out cash on TV ads that no one believes, the company is paying a customer to actually test drive its product. It's risky, sure, but probably no more so than any other business experiment. The test will be whether freeipods.com is still standing in a year's time or whether it becomes just another internet flame out. Thank you.